Here's sonnet number eight, part of the procreation sonnets. Um, been doing a lot of reading on them. They're super interesting to me. Um, Shakespeare spent so much time and energy in his sonnets, um, not so much as love pieces, but more as the old uh, Christian philosophy, be fruitful and multiply trouble. Um, but as a musician, this one's particularly interesting because he kind of equates an individual to a note and a family to a harmony. A note being okay, a monophonic line being okay, but harmony, polyphony, homophony, um, that is where the joy of music comes from. Because if you're sad through music, there's something unsatisfying in it, which means there's something missing, which means in general, it's hard. which is odd because when Shakespeare was around, we were just at the genesis of the understanding of harmony um, and how rounds created harmony, so forth and so on. So it is a very interesting parallel to, in this one, to both the growth and development of music theory. And as I found, not just, you know, his relation to his other speeches, especially all the world's a stage, blah, 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 but to um, the religious discussion about uh, procreation as a form of spreading the religious word, keeping the family unit, the cultural unit, the social unit. So uh, there certainly is a lot of depth to these besides just 14 lines of some wonderful writing. Um, so anyway, enough with my preamble. Um, thank you. And uh, here is sonnet number eight. Music to hear. Why hearest thou music sadly? Sweets with sweets war not joy delights and joy why lovest thou that which thou receivest not gladly or else receivest with pleasure thine annoy if the true concord of well-tuned sounds by unions married do offend thine ear they do but sweetly chide thee who confounds in singleness the parts that thou shouldst bear Mark how one string, sweet husband to another, strikes each in each by mutual ordering, resembling sire and child and happy mother, who all in one, one pleasing note do sing, whose speechless song being many, seeming one, sings this to thee, thou single wilt prove none. 